The mousetrap car is a popular activity with both students and teachers. This paper won't reveal any secrets for building better cars. Instead, it offers a way for students to learn more about their car's motion. Briefly, a mousetrap car is powered by a spring connected by an arm to a string wrapped around an axle. Release the spring and the car speeds up until the string falls away from the axle. After that, it will coast to a stop. Those are the basics. The possibilities are nearly endless. But what can we say about these cars and their motion? With a tape measure, we could find out which one went the farthest. Anything else? Well, how about time? We will let them race and then take some data. Car B went less far and finished in less time. But from these displacement versus time and velocity versus time graphs, we see that car B had a faster average velocity. True, but these graphs are not realistic. The cars were speeding up and slowing down. We need more data. Another time measurement here. When the string, when the string disengages from the axle, it's pretty obvious when that happens. And remember our assumption, the car was speeding up before this and slowing down to a stop afterwards. So take that additional data and with a little math, we get improved graphs. And the nice thing about this paper is that it includes a spreadsheet that will draw the students graphs automatically for them, speeding up and then slowing down. Here we have a new value, a value for maximum speed. And we're still just getting started. We already saw model zero displacement there was linear. Model one quadratic equations, two of them again, speeding up, slowing down. Model two is a third order polynomial function of time, which fails. But why? Well, because of the data we inputted and because of how the coefficients were determined. You can see the appendix for all that interesting stuff and you can see model three for a pretty good looking pair of graphs. The point here is that the students will get a chance to decide for themselves which fit they like best. And once they have their graphs, they can analyze their cars more fully. So that was car A. Let's remember car B. It did not go as far. And we can take a look at model zero, model one, model two. Looks okay. This time model three gives us those impossible, those sketchy negative velocities. Model two did look better. It had a real quick start here. But more important than finding a perfect model is in letting students explore the benefits and the drawbacks of each of these models as they get to know their cars even better.